Hello there everybody and welcome to this channel. My name is Savvy from SCAnatomy.com and today we're going to be working on a honey badger. Now for this video I actually wanted to start the model off a little differently instead of modeling out every piece yourself or uh, just working on a base mesh. Uh, I want to do the base mesh using a metal ball and then we convert it into a mesh and then we start sculpting on that. So for some time now, I've been looking for different ways to reduce the amount of work done at the beginning of these projects to help us get to the sculpting phase a lot quicker and a lot easier. Now this does obviously depend on what your final sculpt is going to be used for. If it's just going to be used for still renders or some really short videos, if it's going to be static like a statue, then you shouldn't really worry about topology that much. But if it's going to be moving, if it's going to be animated, then it's obviously best for you to model everything out yourself so that you have a lot more control over the mesh and the edge flow and the vertices and the work count and all that so you can properly optimize it. Uh, you can also sculpt everything later on and then um, remesh everything, but I haven't really seen uh, great or good remeshes that come cheap. Most of them that are really good are really expensive, so it's really best for you to just model everything out. So all you have to do now is just add in a matter ball and then you can start adding in other different shapes, matter shapes. So what's really cool about this uh, matter ball workflow is that you can experiment with so many different uh, shapes. Uh, you can have, uh, like I have over here, I have a reference image at the back and then I just start outlining the, um, the honey badger. And then uh, later on, I'll convert it into a mesh and then start sculpting on it. So what I did over here uh, with the honey badger was I just focused on one side. I limited my view to this side view. Uh, I focused on these limbs. Uh, what I'm going to do later on is I'm going to mirror it after I convert everything into a mesh. Uh, this is because it's much easier and much faster to do it this way for you to mirror a meta ball. Uh, there is a way for you to do it. You just can't do it with the uh, mirror modifier. So I just chose uh, to do everything this way. So afterwards, I'm going to convert everything into a mesh and then split it right in the middle and then delete the side that doesn't have the limbs and then I'm just gonna add a mirror modifier. So right here using proportional editing I just moved some shapes in place this is so that it's much easier for me to sculpt uh, the mesh and you don't ha necessarily have to do this you could also do this in the sculpting phase as well we are gonna do it afterwards uh, but this is just so that uh, everything looks nice and neat and uh, uh, and fine. You can also come into the mesh and actually fix some some um, topology yourself. Or uh, if you see that there's any problems with the mesh, you could actually go into edit mode and then fix those problems. Say they are floating verts or something like that. Just clean everything up, and then you can come into the sculpting phase, add any multi-resolution modifier, and then start sculpting. So coming into the sculpting phase, what I like to do sometimes, if you've seen in our previous videos or future videos that I will be working on, is before working on the animal's ecoche, uh, what I like to do is sculpt in the details and thinking of the animal, what it would look like, um, the anatomy uh, with, with skin. And then I break it down later on and then I add in uh, the ecoche details later. This helps to, to just make sure that everything is in place and uh, it helps me break down the entire anatomy much easier. Interesting enough, I use reference images from different animals for this honey badger. I used reference images from an otter, a rat, and uh, a little bit from a bear because uh, there's a lot of reference images from a bear. So I just uh, use that just to remember certain uh, muscle groups and shapes. Uh, this is also because uh, there's not that many reference images for, for a honey badger. So usually when you uh, come across that kind of issue, you just uh, pick an animal that uh, is very similar, uh, say, for example, an otter. And then uh, you, if, if there's a lot of reference images for that, and then you can use that. I don't suggest doing this all the time because obviously there are subtle differences here and there. And remember, uh, I was just using these as reference images, as guides. I wasn't really copying everything out of there. I was just using them to remember where certain muscle groups are supposed to go. So if you're wondering why your scene might look a little different from mine when it comes to the mesh, your mesh might look a little soft and mine looks really sharp. That's because I enabled the cavity option in the viewport shading tab. This doesn't really affect your scene that much, just the display. This is just to help you see some details that you're going to be sculpting in. Say, for example, the really thin and really small detail. 
you can turn this option on and off at any time it's not a permanent thing i just keep it on just to help me see better so remember when sculpting these animals you're not just gonna uh, go into the highest level of resolution in the multi-resolution modifier you're not going to be sculpting on a, a poly count of two million or three million uh, that's for the tertiary forms so just focus on your primary and your secondary forms your primary being the major shapes of the mesh and then your secondary forms being what we're doing now the echo shape, the muscles and all that and then the tertiary forms if really needed then you're going to add in things such as veins and uh, those kind of th that kind of detail if you really want your model to pop out that much if you expect people to be zooming in that much then yes you can add in the tertiary forms later on but uh, right now just focus on the primary and then the secondary uh, if there are any issues with the secondary you can always go back to the primary so reducing your uh, your level of subdivision and the multi-resolution modifier and then working on the primary forms you can also uh, edit the mesh itself so go into edit mode and then change some things with proportional editing but i suggest just doing everything with the uh, sculpt because blender will just freak out if for example uh you enter edit mode and then you delete something uh, the multi-resolution modifier will freak out because it is carrying data from uh, the mesh so if you're deleting things whilst editing at the same time it's just going to throw everything off so if there's any issues just go back to the primary forms and then just fix those and then go back and then go into the secondary and uh, just keep doing that tertiary forms always come last uh, again that's if you're adding in really small details veins arteries that kind of thing now if you've probably noticed or as i've probably mentioned many times before uh, when sculpting i do love the clay brush any kind of clay brush uh, you probably notice this in nearly every sculpting software that i use i do use the clay brush but one thing i have noticed is it also depends on which muscle group you're working on so say for example you're working on the abdominal obliques or the latissimus dorsi then the clay strips in blender would be your go-to brush this also goes for shapes like the pectorals or the biceps femoris or the rectus femoris uh, you can also use the clay brush or the clay strips brush in blender uh, but you could also experiment with other brushes of course but uh, what i have seen is um, for shapes like biceps like the bicep biceps bracket uh it's best to use the standard brush or you can actually just outline the shape and then you can use the inflate brush right at the middle where the biceps is is the most thickest and then you can get a really good shape out of that but for shapes that are really soft uh, parts of the bodies that that are really soft such as the face here i do recommend using these brushes the clay thumb the standard clay and the layers brush so all you have to do is just experiment with different brushes for different muscle groups in order to get really interesting results if at any point you're struggling to sculpt on the mesh or add in details the details that you want uh it's always good to just remesh instead of you going all the way uh up to um a higher resolution to to, to get certain details out um if the mesh is fighting if it's necessary for you to remesh then you should probably do that um, but dino topology is really great so you can turn on dino topology and then just sculpt on the area with uh, that you want to uh, add details on so you don't necessarily have to add details everywhere you don't have to uh, up the resolution of the entire model you could just um, focus on that one specific part say for example there are some stretching uh, parts of the mesh and you really don't like the way they look and each time you smooth it out the mesh just breaks or something like that then dino topology should help uh, if it goes to the extreme if anything uh, really goes badly and uh, your mesh just isn't working just remesh just remesh a couple of times uh, mess around with the values be careful because you might uh, go a little too high and then blender might crash on you or something like that also just have a duplicate when you're doing that so just um, duplicate your your mesh uh, and then save it somewhere in one of your collections and make a collection called backups or something or just back the entire blend 
uh, Blender save file uh, and then hit remesh afterwards. This is just good practice. If the mesh is really fighting with you, there's no there's no need for you to spend that much time. If the mesh is just uh, not cooperating, then uh, you just find easier ways to uh, jump over that hurdle. If your scene is a little too heavy or your model just feels a little too uh, too detailed or the resolution is a little too high and you feel like it's not optimized, uh, for you to optimize, you could do simple things such as just reducing the resolution. Uh, it also depends a lot on, like I said before, it depends a lot on what uh, the final result will be used for, what the final sculpt will be used for. If it's gonna be animated, then obviously the best thing for you to do is to create textures and then just bake the uh, details from the high resolution sculpt onto the low resolution model. Um, you can also animate uh, using the multi-resolution modifier. So uh, on your viewport, uh, you'll just set the resolution to very low and then you'll animate it or do whatever. But uh, for the final render, the resolution will be set to high. You can also do that. Um, but it's best for you to just texture everything, probably get something like a 4K texture. Uh, if it's still going to be just for a still render, but you still feel like you could optimize it a little more, then just try to think of what your final render will be, what your final shot will be. If you're going to take video, like turntables if you're gonna have the camera rotating around the sculpt is it going to uh, look at certain things like uh, the underbelly for example or the um is it gonna go around the entire model or is it just gonna be a close-up or is it gonna be looking at the face or something like that uh, once you know that once you know what uh, you're gonna use it for then you can ignore other parts such as if you're never gonna show the bottom of the sculpt uh, of your animal then there's no need for you to add that much detail there um, you can even drop down the resolution down there using dynamic topology you could even go crazy uh, deleting some parts that you know you will never see if you only want the render or the image or the video to be showing one view just focusing on one side of the animal or whatever you're going to be using this for then you could just delete the the other side or just stick to dynamic topology i know when it comes to eyes it's a little tricky to work on those uh, eyes and ears uh, usually when you're sculpting you you think you got it right and then you zoom out and it looks pretty weird uh so easy way to do it is just add in a hole and then like the eye socket and then add in a sphere like I did over here and then just sculpt around that because your eyelids are obviously resting uh, over your eyes. So just use the sphere as a guide. Uh, it's going to stay there anyways. So just use that as a guide and then just carefully sculpt over what the eye is supposed to look like. You can come back uh, again and again to tweak some things like over here. You see, I've been working on this for just just a few minutes, um, but you can always come back to improve on it. So the main focus isn't really the face or the eye or anything like that. So I just wanted something that would look good if you zoomed out. And uh, if you zoom just a little bit, you can kind of see that, okay, this kind of looks good. But uh, we, we just want to make sure that there's enough detail for when you're zoomed out and looking at the entire model. You want to spend a little more time working on whatever the main focus of your model or sculpt is. For us, obviously, it's the entire Echo Shea, um, but also for the face here, I just want to add in a little more detail. I want to uh, spend a little more time working on it. I'm going to do what I usually do with the entire body. If you've seen in our previous videos, I've mentioned before that uh, I do like detailing or just uh, spending some time working on the animal and thinking of what it would look like with skin. So I would sculpt in all the details that uh, would be there. So you could kind of see certain muscles uh, showing even when the animal just has skin without any fur. And then we come uh, in later on to add in the echo sheet details, the bones and everything. So as you can see now, right before adding in the bones and sculpting in the bones and uh, working on the anatomy of the face, uh, adding in the echo shade details and all of that, um, I'm just tweaking, moving things around, smoothing things, roughness here and there. Uh, you, you're going to be doing this a lot if you just feel like the 
um, primary form just isn't working well. So now coming into the muscles of the face, you don't actually have to use brushes that are a little too heavy. You can use the clay brush, but uh, just set the strength uh, low. Uh, or you could use the draw sharp or the crease brush for um, muscle groups such as the temporalis. It's much easier to um, puff up the area around it and then just use the crease brush to outline. Uh, if you're using the clay, just use it to puff everything up first and then um, set the strength to low and then just draw the lines. So now all that is left is just the feet. I'm going to show you the hind legs instead. Uh, you can also uh, copy everything over to the front. Uh, I used um, bear references for, for the feet. You could also use raccoon or rat, um, but you can just look at um, a honey badger's feet. Uh, there are obviously references for that. The problem was that we didn't have a lot of references for the echo shape, the anatomy. Um, so when it came to sculpting the feet, I did make little holes uh, in preparation for uh, adding in the claws. Uh, so instead of having the claws as one mesh, I'm going to have it as a separate object. Uh, separate objects and then we're just going to stick it into the feet. This is just for optimizing, uh, uh, also making sure that the mesh doesn't really break. Uh, if we had to pull these claws out, if we had to make it one mesh, it will be really, really tricky. We'd also have to use uh, Dano Topology in order to um, get the best results or just remesh the entire thing right after pulling. So with all of that done, with the face, the, the feet and the claws and everything, the mesh is totally complete. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one.